Hey, welcome back to our core groups. I want to thank you for uh, tuning in and, and uh, sharing with us uh, during this season. Hope that you have chosen to gather at uh, one of our host homes and uh, engaging in that small group setting uh, where we are in Koinonia. We are better together, allowing the Spirit of God to uh, unite us together with, with God the Father and with others and uh, those intimate relationships that draw us closer to each other and closer to Him helps us become better for we are truly better together. Well, this past Sunday, we uh, dove into uh, the beginning of a season of prayer. We are joining with uh, half a million Nazarenes all over the United States and Canada, and really some from across the world, although the emphasis is in our region here on USA, Canada region, to uh, go through a season of prayer leading up to Pentecost. So, of course, you know Pentecost is the uh, 50 days that took place between the time Jesus departed and the time that the Spirit of God returned. And, uh, and uh, that begins from just after Easter. So we, uh, we pick up on this, and for the next uh, five weeks, uh, next 35 or so days, uh, depending on where uh, in the week you fall in this uh, core group, uh, we are studying together uh, a series on prayer. We'll be talking about prayer in our Sunday services, and uh, you each have an opportunity for this uh, prayer journal that you can, uh, uh, can pick up at the church. If you didn't get one this past Sunday, you can swing by the church office and pick one up and catch up on it. Also, there is uh, an online uh, version. You can download the app for... Uh, uh, those uh, prayer journal or you can actually download this entire uh, entire journal in uh, PDF format and uh, follow along that way. I want to encourage you to uh, set aside a time each day to uh, to go through this and uh, they're just very short uh, devotionals, scripture reflections and uh, and then we're asking that uh, that prayer, that prayer are asking that question regarding prayer. What is this passage of Scripture telling us about uh, the Lord's protection, the Lord's direction, and the Lord's revelation for our life and for the life of the church? So we are praying that, that God would uh, reveal His direction, His protection, and uh, His, His revelation to us during this season as we spend the next five weeks emphasizing uh, the power of prayer and seeking God in the midst of uh, these days leading up to Pentecost. So I hope that you will, will take seriously this opportunity to, uh, to engage in the Word of God and engage in prayer. Uh, of course, uh, this past Sunday, we, we dove into uh, the topic of prayer. And, and we asked, what is, what is so important about prayer? If God knows everything that we need before we even ask Him, why then is it important for us to pray? Well, I, I guess we could ask the same question of, uh, of any relationship. And that is, is uh, why would it be important for you to talk to your spouse? Why would it be important for you to talk to your children? Why would it be important for you to talk to your friends? You see, relationships thrive and, and build upon communication. Uh, it, there's all sorts of communication, and, and we, will, we will talk about this, and, and uh, we'll develop this even more in the, in the days and weeks to come. But uh, there, are, there are communication that rely on words. There are nonverbal communications and cues. Uh, there, are, there are just those times in which you are present in that, in that place. And so we realize that that relationship is all about communication, communicating, speaking, listening, hearing, and, and sharing with one another. Christianity, may I remind you, is all about relationship. It's not about a religion. It's not about a list of rules that we, we follow and we, and we find 
the, uh, the, the spiritual daily checklist of, of duties that we need to accomplish in order to be a, a good Christian or a good person. It is not about a religion. For hundreds and even thousands of years, people have tried their very best to, to make a religion out of Christianity. May I remind you that Christianity is not a religion. It is not just a list of rules of do's and don'ts. It is not a religion. It is all about relationship. It is the opportunity that you have, that I have, that we have to relate to God, to have a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And one of the vital elements of that relationship, one of the vital things of any relationship, is communication. That's the first question I want you to just to talk about in your small group there this day. What is it about communication that is so important to a relationship? Reflect on communication and why communication is so important to your relationship with others. And then, most importantly, why is communication so important in your relationship with God? Let's talk about that for a few moments and then we'll come back. Well, I hope we recognize and understand that communication is the lifeblood of relationships. If we don't communicate, if we fail to communicate with a spouse, uh, those relationships die. If we fail to communicate and, and maintain a relationship through communication with our children, with our family, with our loved ones, those, those relationships begin to distance, they begin to wane. Uh, but when we communicate, when we stay in close communication, there is a bond that is formed, there is a, a tie that is, is connected. And, and uh, it tells us how important 
prayer is to our spiritual lives. Depending on where you're watching this uh, core group in the in the week, maybe it was uh, on Sunday night, and if so, you, this is the first uh, first devotional that came across in our prayer journal is uh, there on on uh, Sunday's uh, devotional from the prayer journal from Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 and and the scripture says but when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you the emphasis of this devotional was on this key truth uh, that simply said but when you pray and it underscores the emphasis that that Prayer is a requirement. Prayer is so vital, so important, that it is a must in any spiritual relationship with God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. So it's not if we pray or if we get a chance to pray. And and oftentimes that is the case. We can get so busy in life and doing the things of life, and and as we talked about a couple weeks ago, doing even good things, so busy doing good things that that we don't have time to pray. I'm reminded of one of the great spiritual leaders of of years gone by that, that said he's too busy not to pray. He's got too much to do that he, that he doesn't have time not to pray because prayer is so vital. So it's not if we pray, but when we pray, making sure that that is a vital part of our spiritual daily lives, not just a couple of sentences before we eat a meal, not just a habit of, of mumbling a, a few things before we drift off to sleep, but the scripture declares that Jesus was, was in the habit of often withdrawing to lonely places so that he could pray. He often pulled away from the crowds. He often pulled away from the disciples. He often pulled away from the hustle and bustle of ministry so that he could spend time with the Father in prayer. Sometimes it was all night seasons of prayer. Sometimes it was just those moments before he would get into a situation. But, but it was consistently and continually a part of Jesus' spiritual life. Now, if this is the emphasis and the example that we have from Jesus, the very Son of God, uh, that he spent time in prayer, how much more do I need, do we need to make sure that we spend time in in prayer. So it's not if we pray, it's when we pray. That's the next question I'd like for you to reflect on for just a couple of moments. Uh, When seems to be the easiest for you to pray and when seems to be the most difficult? When is it hardest to pray and when is it easiest to pray? And and tied to that, what, what time of day or what season of the day do you find most effective for your own personal prayer life? Talk about that for just a few moments together.
Well, I hope as you discuss this, you realize that there, there may not be a specific day and time or a specific time and place, rather, that is the most conducive for prayer. The variety of people, the variety of schedules, the variety of, of, uh, of personality makeups give us different seasons and opportunities for prayer. Some are morning people and like to get up early. I am not a morning person. I can get up early, do often to, to do things and get things accomplished, but uh, I would prefer to stay up late and work on things as to uh, rise early in the morning. That's just some personality traits. Some, some way, somehow, we, we have identified or, or some seem to think that uh, you know, praying early in the morning is, uh, is the most spiritual time. I'll never forget a pastor said, well, he, he didn't want to pray early in the morning because that was the time that the people over in, on, in the Asian part of the world uh, when it was their time to pray and he didn't want to disrupt their time of prayer. Obviously, that's not the case, but uh, the simple reality is, is God wants to meet, to meet us any and every time and through different seasons. In my life, I have discovered in various seasons of life that, uh, that some of the most uh, effective times of prayer have been when I pull away for certain times, uh, when I, before I even get out of bed in the morning, the, the very first thing that I try and do is, is focus my attention because I know that as soon as my feet hit the ground, as soon as I roll out of bed and begin, and my mind starts racing of all the things that I've got to get accomplished, that, uh, that it's easy for me to get on down the road and, and begin to do the things that I think I need to do before I even uh, spend time in prayer. There have been seasons that I've, I've uh, gotten up and, and uh, went outside and sat on the back porch and, and read and prayed and, and listened to worship songs, and those have been powerful, meaning, meaningful times for me. There have been seasons of life that uh, I've gone on prayer walks and, and still enjoy going on walks with my wife, but there have been seasons that I just walk and, and pray and, and find those, those times of, of drawing closer to God. So I hope you recognize that there's, there's not a, a specific right or wrong answer answer to, to when we pray, it's just that we, we do. And we should continue to be in a season of prayer throughout the day, a, a spirit of prayer uh, that says, uh, you know, we can turn off the radio on the drive to, to work or, or home from work, or we can, we can peel off those, those five minutes where we're, when we're sitting in line waiting on something that we can focus in on and be in tune with the Spirit of God and, and use those moments for prayer. It's important to recognize that there is this spirit of prayer that we pray continually. And, and then there are important times, as Jesus did, that we pull away and separate ourselves and quiet ourselves for those moments of prayer. Uh, it's not if we pray. It's when we pray and that we should continually pray as God leads us. Again, depending on where you're at in, in uh, the core group this week, if it's early in the week, you'll, you'll get to this. If it's later in the week, you've already, you've already hopefully read it. But on, on Wednesday, on, on day four uh, this, of this series, the devotional brings to, to mind this, this thought of Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 in which Jesus declares that we should watch and pray that we would not fall into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever experienced that in your own life? That the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, the spirit of God, the spirit of our heart and our intention is to do the right thing, but, but sometimes we're, we're too tired. Uh, the, 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 the desire is there to, to spend more time in prayer, but we've been so busy that we're tired, we're worn out, that the flesh is, is weak. And, and Jesus recognized this. Jesus understood this. Jesus knew this. Jesus was fully human. And, and so he knew what it was to be tired. He knew what it was to be worn out. He knew what it was to be discouraged. And and beat down and disappointed by, by others. He, he knew what it was like to, to, to be in a, in a state of, of discouragement and, and, and even frustration with his disciples and with the followers and with those religious leaders. He, he knew all of the emotions that you experience and that you walk through. 
And so he recognized that there are times that we have to, we have to push forward even though we don't feel like it. And that's what this, this verse, 20, or verse 41 of chapter 26 of Matthew tells us, that, that we should watch and pray. Now, I have to tell you that uh, when I was a young person, I had somebody try and explain to me that uh, this was a clear indication that we should never close our eyes and pray. Uh, I was uh, a high school student. Uh, we lived in the Bahamas at the time, and I was speaking to this guy, and, and he, he was talking about uh, uh, the, this passage of scripture. And he said, "Now you really, you really got to keep your eyes open when you pray. The Bible tells you to keep them open because you never know somebody might come up behind you and, and want to hit you on the back of the head." And I, I kind of chuckled that off and said, "Well, I wasn't, I wasn't really worried about somebody beating me up. I was more interested in trusting God." We teach kids to close our eyes so that we can, we can s- remove the distraction. We teach kids to, to bow our heads and fold our hands so that we can, we can sit still and, and, and remove those distractions. But, but the key is, is not the, the, the posture. The key is, is not the position. The key is, is the choice that we make to move into a season of prayer. And, and when, we, when we see something, I love this, I love this analogy of this that, that simply says, watch and pray. When you see something, you know there's this, uh, there's this slogan that you see at, at airports and different places that says, if you see something, say something. If you witness something happening, you, you need to speak up. And that's kind of this emphasis that, that we pick up from this, this truth of, of watch and pray. It's that we would, we would keep our eyes open, that we would, we would watch and pray. We would see what's happening around us. It's not that we have to pray with our eyes open, but, but when we see something, it should encourage us to pray. I'll never forget, and I think I've shared with some of you before, but a uh, a wise uh, pastoral leader friend of mine told me once he said you know sometimes we god enables us to see things that are going on in people's lives so we know how to pray not so that we have to do something about it not so that we have to start gossiping about it not so that we have to 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 make mention of it but that we know how to pray and so when we see something going on in our world we should turn to pray. When, when we see something on the news, uh, we should turn our thoughts towards prayer. When we hear a siren going off down the road, it should turn our hearts and thoughts towards prayer. When we see some uh, ugly or, or rude or, or weird post on Facebook, it should turn our thoughts and hearts towards prayer. So when we see something, we should pray for something. When we see something that's going on in our world, we should immediately begin to think that we should pray. That we would not fall into temptation, that we would not fall into that same trap that maybe somebody else has fallen into, that we would not succumb to that temptation that maybe somebody else has succumbed to. But, but it doesn't give us a, an air of, of superiority, but it gives us a humble heart that says, Oh God, help me to stay on track walk with them through this very difficult situation and circumstance walk with them through this very difficult time and one of the devotionals and i don't remember exactly which one of this of this week but one of the devotionals uh talks about the fact that it's easy for us to confess the sins of others it's kind of our culture this day. We, we, we love to confess the sins of others. We, we love to talk about what somebody else has done or somebody else is doing. Instead, it, it should turn us towards the reality that we should watch and pray. Uh, watch what ha- is happening in our world and, and lead us to prayer that we might not fall into temptation ourselves, recognizing that though the Spirit is willing, many times the flesh is weak. That's the last question I want us to tackle this evening. Well, why is it easier to talk about people and things than it is to pray for those situations? Why do we find it so simple and so easy to, to gossip about things that are going on, confess the sins of others rather than confessing our own sins and praying for those needs? And what should we do? What are the steps that we could take that would help us to truly live out this truth of watching and praying 
that we might not fall into temptation, recognizing that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let's discuss that for a few moments, then we'll wrap up. Last but not least, the uh, sixth day devotional on Friday, and again, depending on where you're at watching this core group, either you covered it or you'll be getting to it, talks about this listening for the voice of God. And I really want us to begin to, to practice that. And, and uh, we, we've talked about this quite a bit, and days gone by, the truth of speak, Lord, your servant is listening but recognizing that the voice of God is important. The voice of God comes in very various times and seasons and ways. It could be through a sermon. It could be through a passage of scripture. It could be through a song. It could be through the, the testimony of a friend or the word of encouragement that comes from a fellow believer. Or it could simply be that all-important, still small voice uh, that says, this is the way, walk in it. Would you do that just now? Would you just take the next couple of moments and, and uh, uh, we'll just have some background music on the screen. And, and, and would you just quiet yourself right there in their, your small group, in your core group. And, uh, and would you just really say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Would you just listen for what God wants to say to you and through you in this moment?
Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing day. Thank you for this season. Thank you, Lord, for a church that recognizes the power and, and significance of prayer and, and, and the leadership of the Church of the Nazarene, the district superintendents and general superintendents and, and, uh, and publishing company that, that puts us into a, a season of prayer and that challenges us and encourages us to walk this journey together recognizing and knowing the power that comes from a collective body of Christ, believing, listening, and recognizing the power of prayer, and hearing from you. I pray, God, that you would reveal to us, that you would reveal your will and your way in these, these next 30-plus uh, days. I pray, God, that you would just speak to us in these moments, and, and that on a regular basis, on a daily basis, that we would carve out those times and those seasons, that we would just be still before you, that we would silence ourselves in your presence, and we would just simply say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And however you choose to speak to us, if it's through that still small voice, it's through the voice of a friend or a, a family member or a loved one, through a, a message or a scripture or, or through a song, oh God, however you choose to speak to us, I pray, oh God, that we would be ever in tune with your spirit, leading us and guiding us and empowering us to be all that you want us to be. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. And we celebrate you in the midst of everything that is said and done. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor in Christ's precious and holy name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, looking forward to, uh, to worshiping with you this weekend. Continue to encourage you to uh, plug in to these uh, core groups. And, and, and would you do me a favor? Would you, uh, if you haven't plugged into one of the core groups, if you're just watching this online by yourself, would you be sure that you, this next week you would find one of those times and places and tap into one of those core groups. If you already tapped into a core group, would you do me a favor? Would you reach out to a friend or somebody else and say, hey, would you go with me? Maybe, maybe you, you haven't gone yet and, and you want somebody to go with you or you're already at one, but, but you want to invite somebody to join you. Say, hey, I was, I was at uh, the, the Lentz's house and, and uh, we had such a great time sharing and, and praying together and talking together. Would, would you join me? Would you, would you come along with us and, and uh, be there? Or, or I was at the Crosby's home or, or the Peshaval's home or at the church with the Lions or the Montalvo's home. These hosts have opened their homes for this time and this place and this season. And, and I want to encourage you to take full advantage of it. We're experimenting with it for the next several weeks. And uh, so I encourage you to take full advantage of it. Go to one, invite somebody to go with you to one, and let's, let's grow together during this season of drawing closer to each other and most importantly, closer to God. God bless. We'll see you this weekend.